I make my triumphant return to 101 things to do in Minecraft. There's so much left to do, so let's get into exploring, building, and crafting. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a fantastic day. As it descends into the night, I'm gonna make something spooky in Minecraft. Ooh, ooh, ah, 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 ah. That was supposed to be my evil sounding laugh, which wasn't really that evil. And it's not that spooky out quite yet. It's like 5.30 on the dot actually. So as I do this video, it's gonna get even spookier in here and in Minecraft. Let me show you what I exactly did with the, the barn over here is what it looks like. Uh, final run over here. Uh, got the, the horses over here. Got the horses in the back. Gonna take the horse down to the Old Town Road, and I guess it turned into grass. Anyways, I don't know how that actually works because there's technically no grass connecting from one area to another. Maybe because it's actually underground. I don't know. But anyways, that's what I got so far over here. Uh, this area is probably gonna change a little bit. I do like that there is um, ice lake thing there but yeah we'll see so the spooky thing i want to make to uh in not uh in doctrine that's not the phrase i wanted to use to initiate the halloween season is an idea that i talked about i think as i was building the house where i want to make a giant jack-o-lantern house just like the snowman over there and i thought about putting a jack-o-lantern head on top of that snowman but again, that's a lot of work, and I like that snowman as it is right there. So, where this area is with the giant mushroom uh, island in the sky, this is where it's going to end up being instead of there being this, uh, you know, like serene area that I initially thought there was going to be. Uh, not quite going to be the case uh, right now. So, my name is Brian Saviano Bricks. Oh, Brian, hello. I hope you are as well. As you possibly can be given the circumstances of the world because y'all know it's cuckoo kachu out there so what I'm gonna do is build a giant jack-o-lantern hut over here kind of like the igloo before it but now there's gonna be a giant jack-o-lantern so to start with this I'm gonna work with pumpkins and basically in case you are unfamiliar with the way that I do things I am doing the equivalent of what it would be like when you're watching a cooking show where you know it takes two hours to make a particular meal and it just so happens that you know the people running the show happen to have everything all prepared and ready so why don't you just pretend that i ended up harvesting you know seven thousand different pumpkins that way i can make you know a bunch of different jack-o-lantern uh houses here so or one big jack-o-lantern house i should say because it would take me a very long time personally and i would much rather um, you know, make more videos for you in the time it would take for me to actually uh, get all those jack-o'-lantern uh, things rocking and rolling. So, with that being said, it's going to start right here. And it's going to be one wide in terms of the doorway here. So, let me uh, get this here. And it's going to basically cut through this mountain sort of an area. And I did not do this off camera because I kind of wanted to show the process here. So let's say I do this, right? It's going to start kind of right in here. And the fact that there's snow everywhere obviously doesn't make this look any, you know, more spooky because snow in October is only a thing that really New Englanders know because that sometimes very rarely happens, but it does end up happening. So uh, maybe not going to happen this year. Who knows what's going to happen for Halloween this year? I'm voting a whole lot of nothing. I don't think anything is going to happen at all because nothing ever happens anymore. But I normally never have plans for Halloween, as I have said many a times in many different videos I've recorded in my entire uh, video game playthrough career. So uh, I can reminisce stories on how it's gone horribly wrong in the past. But for now, I will do no such thing as I carve out where exactly this is going to go. So you can see like, you know, stairs are obviously going to be right here as the stairs end up getting created. And it's going to basically cut in the middle right here. So it's going to like, kind of like a canyon sort of a thing. So it's going to part right here. Yeah. So just kind of like this. And although I'm not necessarily like, I always do the details first, but I do like to have a good grasp on what's going on here. So I'm going to just fill in these stairs as they are and start with that before I even get to the jack-o'-lantern thing itself. Boom, just like this. So then it's gonna start 
the entrance is probably going to be like right here, which, you know, the terrain is uneven, but I guess that's okay. And as soon as I start to like visualize what's happening here, it'll be all good. So the jack-o'-lantern house is going to be pretty big. It's going to be suitable for, I would say, one person who wants to live really large or multiple people. And so I'm just going to not fill in the grass right now, but I'm going to do just a little bit. That way I can get a, a rough idea, a good bearing on what it's going to be like footprint wise. And then afterward, I'll fill in all the rest of the grass wherever I need to. So let's say it starts right here. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, cool. So whenever I make a structure like this, in case you didn't watch when I did the snowman uh, 7,000 years ago, I always like to judge it based off of the Minecraft character itself and uh, appropriately make the ceilings uh, the height that they should be, uh, match the aesthetic on the outside with the inside, and try to do the very best I can with uh, all of that. So the vibe I'm going to go for is uh, jack-o'-lantern, obviously. So I'm not going to use the jack-o'-lantern piece here because this looks actually very weird with this texture. I don't know if I like that. I'm going to go for a standard uh, jack-o'-lantern feel overall, okay? So uh, something I wish that I could kind of figure out. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull over this separate tab over here and look up real quick a uh, Minecraft glass uh, black and see because you can make uh, stained glass in black. That is a possibility for you to do, and all you need is an ink sack from a squid along with a bunch of glass blocks in order to make that actually be a thing. So, that is relatively easy for me to get. So when I'm making things like this, I don't mind cheating by uh, grabbing, you know, the material here. But let's say it wasn't possible for me to get the, the magenta color in the things that I have or it's easily acquirable, then I won't do it. But because that is pretty easy to get, then i um, spawn it in here. So, the vibe I'm going to go for is this being the mouth, the eyes. It's going to be black stained glass, okay? And so you're going to enter right through the very front here. And the way that I'm visualizing it, if I can, is instead of having the... I, I love how I just like try to like see into the future, like... You know? But the way I'm visualizing it is instead of there being um, necessarily a doorway right here, there is going to be a doorway, but it's going to lead directly into uh, what I'm working with here. So I'm going to go for the Acacia door, which I do have Acacia trees uh, started up here. So that's kind of orange-ish. Uh, and the way that I'm thinking about this, let's say I do this here. This is going to be the very bottom of the mouth, right? So let's say if I really wanted to, because if I, if I do this... It's going to kind of not look right, right? Let's see. Um, yeah, see? That doesn't really... I don't like this. So, like, I want to make sure whatever I'm building, it makes sense logistically. Because technically, you know, snow is not going to get in here. But it doesn't... I don't, I don't like it, you know? So, instead of glass panes, I'm going to go with the glass blocks. So, that's fine. So, we'll go with this. And this is going to basically be the bottom of the mouth. Right here, right? So... That works. So it's going to like enter through here. So let's say I want to start, keep it symmetrical for now, even though a jack-o'-lantern smile is not necessarily symmetrical. But once I nail the size of the smile, then I can start to figure out what I want to do from there. So let's say I do this, right? Go up like this, and then bam, there's the size of the smile right there. So you can kind of visualize how big this jack-o'-lantern is going to be just based off the size of the smile right there. So if I fill all this in right here, like obviously it's uh, not a typical smile for a jack-o'-lantern. It's a bit jagged, you know? So let's say I do like this and maybe this over here as part of it. And then I remove a piece here and here and then here and add one here. So that way that's the smile. It's not supposed to be symmetrical. They can be on a jack-o'-lantern. Um, this this uh, texture in the twisty texture pack is not a good example because it is symmetrical. But a lot of the times when you see a traditional jack-o'-lantern like clip art or whatever, it's not necessarily like like the points are clean cut, but 
it's not like you have two teeth, two teeth. It's just kind of whatever you decide. So this smile is gonna be a bit more like Joker from the Dark Knight, like like a demented sort of smile is what I have visualized uh, here. So let's say I fill this all in right here. The size of the jack-o'-lantern is going to be, uh, let's see, three over from where the smile ends. Actually, no, I shouldn't base it off. No, it is the same size. So they both end symmetrically. So one, two, three. So let's say that's the f that is the whole entire front. Let me go one more. Let's say one more over here, so it's four and four, right? And I can remove some of this here, so that way I can actually see what it all looks like. But if you have the symmetrical parts over here, you can kind of get a gauge for what's going on next. So that is going to be the entire front of the pumpkin. Now, I could make it more round if I really wanted to. Am I? No. It's going to be the exact same style as that snowman. Uh, which I should improve on that design, but whoops, not going to do that. Not right now. So in order to uh, fill in everything here, I'm just going to use the different uh, pumpkins. And I'm using pumpkins because it, it works better than, you know, if I got a bunch of, uh, like, concrete or whatever. Uh, concrete, I believe, is a lot harder to uh, find and to use. And obviously, the system I have in place right now for pumpkins, uh, it works pretty well where I could just, you know, wait and harvest more, as many as I could uh, possibly want to. So this is, yeah, basically pretending I harvested a bunch of pumpkins and, you know, call it a day there. So that's like the very front, right? And now, in terms of adding uh, the eyes, they're going to be a little bit more separated from the mouth. There's going to be quite a, uh, not, not a lot of space, but just a little bit of space here. So let's say it starts like right there, right? It's going to be a huge house actually. So that, <laughs> that happens too, where I'm like, oh, this isn't going to be that big. And then it totally is. So whoops, my bad. Uh, I'm going to go with this right here. And let's say the eyes would be about right there. Maybe make them five wide here. Yeah. All right. So one, two, three, four, uh, five. Yeah. The, the eyes don't need to be in the same exact place. They can be kind of Actually, you know what? They are going to be in the exact same place. And the reason you want to make these symmetrical, the way I'm visualizing it right now, is because if you have the eyes shifted a certain way, it'll make it look like it's looking in a direction. And I don't want that. I want the eyes to be, like, facing straight forward. I don't want a, a crooked-eyed um, jack-o'-lantern here. Not right now. So, there's five right there. So now those are going to be the eyes. They're going to go up quite a bit like this. And then, let's say I go up toward this way. Yep, just like that. That looks pretty menacing already. All right, and then these do not have to be symmetrical in any capacity, right? So let's say I do, you know, this. It's just ever so slightly different. It's two, you know, still spooky looking eyes, but they are very different in that regard. So, uh, making the, the inside is going to be the really fun part here. And, you know, if I use the jack-o'-lantern here, right, it lights it all up. However, you know, if I have it on this side, that's great. And it can light it all up, and that's totally fine. But then the whole inside, there's a bunch of jack-o'-lantern faces everywhere. So I think I can pull off a better effect if I don't use the jack-o'-lantern and I just use regular pumpkins. And then I can do something on the inside to make it totally look lit up and spooky in its own regard here. So I'm going to fill all of this in. And then basically replicate what I was doing before uh, with the snowman and, and try to do that on each of the other sides as well. So there is going to be quite a bit of me, you know, skipping around here. Uh, not necessarily speeding up because uh, I got nothing to say, honestly. And it's going to be kind of boring and it's going to be low-key therapeutic for me to do this. So yeah, that is the very front of the, the pumpkin there, which looks pretty baller already. I think that looks pretty good. I like the face. It's not uh, too spooky, but it's just spooky enough. So, I kind of like it being square too. Like, there's an ever so slight amount of roundness there with that guy, but I like it being square or as square as it can be. So, I'm not going to make it fully square. Oh, this could fit. Oh, that could fit a bunch of people in there. All right. So, let's say, let's say I make it like that, maybe a little bit shorter. Like, yeah, because like pumpkins are typically larger on one side and then, 
you know, they're like rectangles. They're not uh, they're not as square or circular as a uh, a snowman, I guess, right? So I think that could work fairly well. And if I put all this over here and plug all this in, uh, the interesting part is going to be the stump, actually. I don't quite know what material I'm going to use. I mean, I could use just grass if I really wanted to be that guy. Oh, you know what I could use? I could use melons. Ooh, that might actually be what I do. All right. And I'm going to try to come up with some cool interior design things involving the pumpkin to make it really stand out as opposed to the snowman. But I could totally see this area working and taking some of the villagers that are over by the uh, the snowman and moving them over here. That way they actually have a, another place to exist because we still have all those villagers inside the snowman and they haven't left. So they're just kind of being held hostage there inadvertently. So let me um, let me fill in all of this and uh, take it from there. I think for the floor here, real quick, I'm going to use acacia wood because that is technically orange. And I think that could work nicely. Yeah, that's totally going to work. So let me fill all the... Wait, I'm not going to do that. Uh, let me fill all of this in and uh, show you how it looks in just a second. And here we go. There it is. Cool. So this is what the inside looks like for right now. Uh, there's going to be multiple floors from what I can kind of tell from what I want to do. Now, something... I'm kind of toying with it's inconvenient that it's actually daytime right now, but that's what it looks like right now And that totally looks like a jack-o-lantern that looks really cool So something I want to do right now before I get started uh, any further is uh, Work on this here stem. I am gonna use the melon and uh, in case you didn't realize I did put a couple more shoots of bamboo around here that way it could look like kind of filled in so like when you look at it from this side You can't really see what's going on over there um, which is inconvenient now that there's a giant pumpkin over there, but I guess it's cool that it can kind of lay in mystery, I guess. So, for the stem up top here, uh, it can basically be any size it wants to be. Uh, obviously not that big. It's going to be more so like this, right? Let's say it, it it's going to have like even less uh, consistency in terms of how it's going to be curved and whatnot. But let's say we go like right over toward here. And then over toward this side as well. I feel like that's not big enough. I feel like that there needs to be a much larger stem going on over here. So let's say we upgrade this bad boy a little bit here. I, I feel like I always uh, inadvertently do that. In the, for the sake of like trying to make it look better, it doesn't necessarily look as large as life as it could be, you know? So let's say that. How's that look? It looks pretty good. You know, it's off-center. It's it's a little small, I guess, but I guess it works out just fine. For now, at least. So the inside here of our giant pumpkin home, uh, the idea that I, I uh, is kind of striking me right now is obviously using glowstone. So this needs to look lit up from the outside, okay? Uh, and I kind of don't want to put just glowstone right there and call it. I kind of want to put the glowstone very tastefully around the entirety of the place that way uh it makes sense for the villagers inside of here as well as um you know looking good right so that is not quite what i want i don't want jungle wood i want acacia acacia go over here i could have used smooth red sandstone for some of the stairs or anything like that but it's just not going to work out like because I, I, I don't have the, the resources on me. And I don't want to, like, pretend I went all the way to this biome and did this whole thing. Like, it's not necessarily um, going to make sense, right? So let's say with this, I have multiple floors. I'm going to make the floors kind of first here. So let's say one begins, like, right here, right? And the entirety of this front is going to be open. So this section right here is going to be absolutely open. And it's going to be kind of reflective of how I did the snowman. So let's say there's one right here this floor you know it's basically going to be like living quarters for villagers um and i'm gonna basically transfer a lot of the villagers over to uh this area which i don't necessarily how i don't know how to do that i think i think i can lead them or somehow i can get them from point a to point b i'm not quite sure if i were actually really smart i would make an elevator system but the villagers cannot use the elevator system therefore um, it doesn't really make sense for me to do that and to kind of force the villagers into that. 
Um, let's say I did have, you know, this pole is going to kind of go all the way down here, be the connector for all the different floors here. Uh, this one can start right here. Or rather, no, it's going to start... It's all going to be in the same area, right? It's not going to, like... This whole wall is basically going to be blank, from what I can tell. Or, or what if I didn't do that, actually? <laughs> what if I did this instead? What if I went over here, and that way each of these sections, I guess, could be blank? But then what do I put on those walls, you know? I don't, I don't really know what I could do. But I'm just going to lay the, the groundwork down, and then probably use accessories afterward to get to where I want to go. But I think for right now, in this moment right here, like, this is a good base. Like, I I'm kind of visualizing this the way I would visualize, like kind of like a hamster home like you get to see all the room where the hamsters can go it's kind of what villagers are right in a way without it sounding too demeaning I guess I don't know so I'm gonna put this here this is kind of what I thought is like illuminating the floors uh, that way it looks lit up and it still covers a good amount of area here and then I don't want them to be up close to the wall I want them to be you know one little space at bare minimum so that way everything can be lit up properly without the lights being too up front in the face of the jack-o'-lantern here. So now this entire thing is lit up, right? There's a couple of uh, dead zones over here, like a little bit, but not nearly as much as it was before. So this is basically what I had in mind. Um, this may need to be a ladder situation instead. I don't think I can fit stairs, which is fine. And if I really wanted to... Uh, I could put scaffolding in here. Ooh, let's see. Obviously, I can use scaffolding because I have plenty of bamboo, as you can see literally right out the window there. Uh, the issue is going to be fencing because the villagers are going to inadvertently walk off cliffs, and y'all know I can't have any of that. So let's say right here is the system for the scaffolding to exist. And scaffolding does have physics. That way you can, like, you know, change it up that way. Um, and it does kind of float there, too, so make sure you keep that in mind. However, if you're at the bottom here, let's say I get rid of this real quick, it can connect like this, and you don't necessarily need to be at the top of the structure to start this. If you literally just hold down, right-click here, provided you have enough scaffolding, it goes all the way to the very top. So it works out in that sense uh, very well. So you don't have to be uh, left guessing uh, how many you need. You can just kind of do it that way. And so with this, I'm gonna have to go this way, do one more layer, Yep, it's going to have to go over toward this way as well because I'm going to need fencing right here. I don't know if the villagers can climb this. I'm going to assume no. And maybe I'll assume wrong and I'll I'll need to file a couple of claims with the insurance company that doesn't exist. Um, but I'm hoping that isn't an issue. So that way, if somebody were to climb up toward this way, you know, I can climb up here and then bam, there's floor number one, go all the way up toward here, bam, there's floor number two. And then you don't need to have the scaffolding go any higher because you're not going any higher. So it is currently, I don't know what time it is because I can't tell with the sunlight. Um, it is uh, high noon. All right, cool. Move that. Uh, let's go with uh, this and then that. Boom. Cool. So that's basically the inside here. Um... I, I feel like something should go over here. This is way too much blank space, right? I mean, I could extend the um, the floor to go over toward this way, but I feel like I can do something else. Is there anything pertaining to, like, a jack-o'-lantern I can do? I mean, like, not really. I mean, I could put, like, I guess, like, pumpkin seeds in here, but I don't know what, like, would look good for pumpkin seeds if I were to, like, replicate that in Minecraft. Because that's technically what's inside of a pumpkin, right? Not honeycomb, obviously. Um, not sponges. Uh, and that's what I would have used otherwise, is orange wool or concrete. Uh, concrete is definitely it's just orange. I think that looks... I think this looks better. You know, it fits with the aesthetic a little bit more. Te I mean, technically, birch wood could be seeds, but I don't really like that. I don't really... I don't really care for that. Not really, honestly. Um, I don't know what I want to do here. So I have a little bit of an idea. What if instead of doing a practical Minecraft structure like I normally do, what if I made something a little different? So I got this little idea that 
maybe like so okay i always do things that are practical for what you can use in minecraft i don't like making structures that don't make sense because that's not what i do however i think for the uh, purpose of this build specifically i'm going to break that rule because there's going to be plenty of villager uh housing around here right so let's say instead i made a structure and i think that structure is going to be a pumpkin rather a jack-o-lantern factory in here it's kind of this idea that i had and i'm going to see if i can pull it off so if i grab these here i have jack-o-lantern here so let's say there's like a structure in here right that can really help with uh making you know this become a reality here so i think i'll just need these things here i don't know why i broke that um whatever actually i know why i broke that so i'm gonna nope that's not what i wanted to do dang it all right here bam cool this one is going to go in here for now just for the purpose of lighting. It's not going to stay there forever. Bam. All right. So this machine is going to start like right here. And what I just thought of is like, all right, let's say we have um, the cobblestone, this machine right here, this fictitious machine that doesn't actually work, right? This could go right here. And the jack-o'-lanterns pop out of one end where the uh, pumpkin's going to one end. So you obviously make a jack-o'-lantern by taking a pumpkin, using shears on it, combine it with a torch, boom, there you go, right? So instead of doing it this way, there would be this fictitious machine that actually does it that way. So kind of what I'm looking for here is, uh, like, let's say, like a pumpkin goes into here, right? Pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. And then eventually it goes jack-o'-lantern, jack-o'-lantern, right? So there's going to be something involving, like it's going to be a very small scale machine. Very, very small scale. I'm talking like this, you know, super duper small scale. And you could technically go inside of here if you wanted to. I don't know what the purpose of it would be for, but I, like, I don't know. You know, I'm just trying to like think of something, right? So let's say I do this. And I, this is my, I guess, inner Lego builder in me coming out. Because a lot of these little details um, don't make sense for Lego people. But they look cool. And that's basically the entire purpose behind, uh, you know, a lot of these different builds. Is they're not necessarily practical or they, they make sense for the universe. But they are a thing. So let's say I go uh, replicate this on the other side. I'm a big fan of symmetry, as you can tell. Uh, we'll do this, just like that, okay? So now the top looks almost symmetrical. It's not meant to be a perfect machine here. But let's say I do this, right? And then this is going to be all fake, right? It doesn't really matter what I do here. It's just meant to be for show, okay? Let's do this, and then I kind of want there to be a system where smoke is coming out of the machine, and it goes all the way through to the top. Um... What I could do... Ooh, I have a, another idea. All right, cool. So let's say I do this. It's going to go all the way through the very top right here. I know I just blocked out that light. Give me a second, all right? So it's going to go all the way up through here. Um, I kind of had another idea, too. I like how this happens. I have one idea, and then it spawns into five other ideas. It's good. you got to let those juices flow. got to let the blood flow through your brain and have it work out. You know what I mean? It's good stuff. So let's say I cover all this up right here. Make sure not to trap myself, okay? So this is all gonna be blank right in here, all right? It's fine, doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm gonna do is make it so you're not gonna be able to see inside of there. It's gonna be covered up by coal, all right? So the blocks of coal are gonna go inside of here. So that way it's basically as if you were looking into this machine, you see nothing, right? It's like, you know, in a machine, it's like a dark, void you don't know the mechanics of what's going on there you just see like that see it looks like a dark void because it's not lit up right that's exactly the vibe i'm going for so cool that works out perfectly all right so uh and i'm also going to put a couple of jack-o'-lanterns over here i'm going to remove this and then these are going to go basically like stocking up right and some of them are not facing toward the wall some of them are facing this way you, know, you got to make it look a bit more natural I guess. And I could have um, uh, carved pumpkins as well. Let's see. I get this over here. going to have this. Okay. Adding little details here and there, you know. So I'm going to have these chilling out 
just like this. Okay. One right there. Uh, one right there. Uh, beautiful. Okay, cool. So that's fine. Uh, we have a bunch of pumpkins chilling over toward this way. This is basically the storage area for pumpkins to be converted into uh, jack-o'-lanterns, right? So all these are over here. Um, I'm going to hide a jack-o'-lantern right in here. Bam. So that way it's lit up, right? So this is all going up toward this way. All right, this fictitious machine. And you know what works well with fictitious machines? Levers. We need levers literally everywhere, all right? So one right here. It's going to be another one right here. Uh, we're going to get some redstone to really sell the idea that this is a, a thing, okay? We're going to we're gonna toss some redstone, like, right, he right here. No. Uh, into the machine. Yes, there we go. That's going to work just fine. Yep, that makes sense. That makes sense for Minecraft. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow, it's a functioning jack-o'-lantern machine. Isn't that awesome, ladies and gentlemen? It's crazy, right? Anyway, so let's go over into here. I'm going to smash all this out right here. And so this thing is going to go all the way through to the top. And now you may be like, Brian, what are you possibly doing with this section up here? Well, I'm f I'm so amazed that you ask that, sir, madam, or otherwise tuning in right now, right? So with this little bit, this is going to be where they fuel up the machine. So right inside of here, there's going to be this section akin to what uh, was going on inside of the... Um, the, the house. So let's say I think I can light this on fire with flint and steel. Maybe. Low key. I don't know. Uh, will it stay lit? Uh, I don't know. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter because netherrack I know stays lit forever. So I'm just going to use that because you're not going to be able to tell it's, it's not coal right there. So let's say actually I'm going to put it down there so you can actually see what's going on. Bam. Alright. Nope. Do that one. Cool. Uh, make sure you take precautions and put iron bars around it. Uh, not only not only because like that is a responsible thing to do, but as long as you have your fire surrounded by like cobblestone the entire way through, you're good. If you don't, this could potentially all light on fire and burn everything down. So make sure the entire area is surrounded by things that cannot burn, all right? So these over here are gonna be the stacks of coal that are going to be for the machine. I'm actually gonna take that out right there because I don't want that uh, working and lurking right there. So, uh, there's also going to be a whole bunch of other, um, you know, things going on over toward here. I'm going to really decorate this place out, but for right now, that's the vibe I'm going for. And it's not going to be quite like a fireplace, but it's going to be close enough. Bam. So now, the coal goes down into there. Boom. The machine makes it all functional right over there. So now is the interesting part. And the part where I kind of got messed up, how does that look? Not as bright as I wanted to. But it looks bright enough, right? It looks it looks fine. It's just fine. So let's say right through here, right? There you can tell it's netherrack, but from the other side, you cannot tell. Um what do I want to do here? So like what I what I could do, I can't move the stem, right? The stem has to be in the middle. Right? It it can't, there's no way for me to funnel that and I could, but I'm not gonna. So let's say. I wonder if this will work. So let's say I put a campfire. Should I do blue? No, I should obviously do orange because it's a pumpkin. Duh. Uh, let's say I put over here instead of that. I do this. One, two, three, four. Does that work? It does not block it. Okay, cool. So it looks like there's smoke coming out of the pumpkin, which is low key weird. But like, I'm down with it. You know what I mean? I'm down with it. I don't really mind at all. That's fine. Um, this looks very dark. Uh, how would it look if I replaced it with regular glass? That looks a lot brighter. Wow. Okay, that is a very stark difference in light level. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I might replace all of this. I thought the black would sell it more, but, like, it kind of doesn't, you know? It just kind of doesn't really sell it unfortunately but yeah i'll swap all this out with uh regular glass here and that'll probably look substantially better and so what i'll do is bring some of the villagers over toward here i believe we still have some spawn eggs if i uh wanted to transfer villagers or rather create the villagers and have them uh, exclusively live inside of here and they could actually have the freedom to leave 
because for the longest time I actually haven't had it where uh, villagers can leave the snowman for fear that like some mob was going to destroy him. But I believe with, um, you know, the way I have this system set up over here, they can't actually get lost and they should be able to go back. And there is a way to breed villagers. I just haven't like gone through that effort. So I need to actually do that at some point, but that's for another time entirely. Yeah, that looks a lot better. That looks a lot better. It conveys the jack-o'-lantern feel a whole lot more. So let me go back over toward here. And I'm going to go into the very bottom. And yoink. There we go. I'm going to switch into survival. That way I don't accidentally spawn in more eggs than I need or that are allowed for me to do that. Because those are gifts from Santa from a very long time ago. And it's funny because Santa is almost back again. So Santa's going to leave even more goodies that we're not going to use for another year. So that works out. Uh, valuable items. We have 17. Really? 17? Did I accidentally cheat too much? Because I feel like 17 eggs is too much. But, I mean, I guess it's fine. Um, but I'll go over toward this way. I'm going to put villagers in here. And they're going to exist very peacefully. And I can make them have all sorts of careers and whatnot. I'm probably going to use half of these eggs. And that way I still have half the amount of eggs for whatever else comes next. Okay? And that way, when these villagers, if these villagers want to leave, they can exit out of the front and only the front. And they will be surrounded by fence gates. That way they don't get lost. So let's say I pop over into here. I'm going to use uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, I guess is fine. And they automatically leave. Awesome. So I have nine remaining. Make note of that here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the remaining ones in here. That way I don't necessarily uh, lose myself here. So let's pop back into creative. I have nine remaining. I'm going to give myself a chest right there. All right. And then nine. Bam. That's all that is left. Okay. Let's get out of here. Uh, you should not leave because it's very scary out there and I cannot properly defend you. I don't have the iron golems yet to actually help you. So sorry. Uh, kind of has to be this way for the time being. Okay. So if they do escape slash, you know, leave, which is fine. I'm not holding them hostage, I promise. It's just for your own safety. I really sound like a kidnapper. I'm sorry. Uh, so there's all sorts of, you know, they're, they're going to go over here. <laughs> they're going to go over here. Um, and then they're going to go anywhere that is safe. And, like, what I really want to do is have, like, the light levels be enough so that way... Golems can spawn in and I can take care of them that way but because I don't have a definitive like saving method here um, I, I don't want them to get destroyed so I think this looks good as it is right now they're kind of chilling all throughout here uh, one thing I am going to do is give them beds because that is a thing that uh, they need so let's go with this uh, bed we'll go with uh, orange right obviously that makes sense so we'll go with uh, a couple right over here, just for the sake of it. I'm going to probably change up the interior quite a bit, just because, it, you know, I want to make sure that they're comfortable and everything else like that. And it looks like they can't even access this section up here. So let's say I put um, some beds over here. That way the uh, villagers, you know, technic... No, I'm not going to do that there. Not right there. Uh, they're going to be on the bottom floor. I might transition some villagers from here to other places or make the beds a better system. Whatever. For now, this works just fine. I love the idea behind this. I like how the jack-o'-lantern actually has a purpose. Purpose. And it looks good. It looks really spooky and is perfect for the Halloween vibe. I like the placement of it. And it fits uh, the other giant cubes. It clearly shows I can't make a circle or a sphere or have any other creative ability besides making giant squares. So there you go. Uh, my name has been Brian Saviano Bricks. Oh, Brian, there we go. Some life into this area. Uh, ideally, I can get the snowmen uh, villagers over, incorporated more toward this way, get them, you know, spawned in and living instead of just being trapped in there. Um, but the fencing over here definitely helps. So, like, they can go back inside and everything. So that's cool. And it's all lit up over here, too. So that works out. I hope you have a fantastic day. Keep on being spooky. Um, eat some candy. Sleep well. Hydrate, etc. I'll talk to you very soon for more Minecraft. Bye.